All right, who has one they'd like to sing this morning? 465. 465. Okay, 465. Another one. Okay, 275. Al will always bail us out with a mighty fortress. Thank you very much. Any particular stanza this morning? Fourth stanza of 275. And I think, Bob, you did have your hand up. 124. 124. This would be our last one. Good morning. Let me welcome you here on this, the Lord's Day, this third Sunday in Advent, and share with you a few congregational concerns to begin with. Kathy Williams has gone home from the hospital, and so we're very excited about that news. And Don Grover, uh, who was in the hospital for some carotid artery surgery and had the surgery and then was checking out and had chest pains and so they put him back in CCU but then he checked out the next time and he didn't have any more chest pains and so he got to go home. So Don just likes to make it interesting. He, uh, I told Mary Alice, I said, the hard part is just getting out of here, I guess. It's, but we're very glad that they're both out of the hospital. Let me tell you that the Louisville Winds will be performing a concert this afternoon at 3 p.m. That, of course, is at no cost. 
and there is a win there is is a Wednesday night dinner this week and the musical ensembles for children youth and adults will rehearse those schedules are in your good news to go please consult your good news to go for those schedules there will be a youth lock-in that night as well please talk to Terry Isn't that right Terry if you need more information about that event we have two worship services in the sanctuary on Christmas Eve one will be at 11 a.m. and the other at 11 p.m. there will be no 830 service that morning and Sunday school will not be meeting The building closes at noon this Friday and will be closed Monday and Tuesday, December 25th and 26th. And there will be one combined worship service at 11 a.m. on December 31st. And Sunday school will not meet that morning. Visit the living room after worship for some fair trade items for Christmas gifts. There's also coffee and chocolate for sale. And please take a moment uh, at some point today and complete the vitality survey and get it back to us. Please be sure and read the good news to go carefully for all those other events. And now let us take this opportunity to meet one another as we have our gathering of the people.
Let us pray. Oh God, we ask that we feel your presence with us this morning that we know is here. That we might be filled with a sense of joy this day, knowing that you keep your promises, knowing that you are a God of love as well as a God of justice. We ask that you watch over us as we come before you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God sends me to be the rest. Let us worship God.
mighty and powerful God, your word says rejoice always, but we would rather be disappointed about the things that don't go the right. Your word says pray without ceasing, but we go for days without even thinking about you. Your word says give thanks in all circumstances, but our thankfulness is fleeting because we think we deserve blessings. Your word says hold fast to what is good, which we would fast to sinful ways of thinking and acting. Let us pray our prayer of confession together in one voice. God, our maker, we confess that we are not ready to meet you. You send your spirit to release us. May we remain captivated by sin. You stand among us in Christ Jesus. May we claim we do not know you. Forgive us, God of grace. Make us holy, make us whole. Keep us safe and sound until the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The prophet Isaiah had declared, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. Friends, believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thank you. pray with me. Lord, open our ears that we might hear your word. Open our hearts that we might do your will. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 61, the good news of deliverance. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. children. So, one of the scriptures we're reading today is taken from John, which is one of the Gospels, back here in the, in the um, New Testament. And we're going to talk about somebody, 
um, named John the Baptist. And if I said John the Baptist, I bet you could tell me a little bit about him. Yes. Jesus' cousin. Do we have cousins? Y'all have cousins? Yeah. What else? Yes. He baptized people. Man, you guys are smart. So, okay, John the Baptist was a preacher. Or he was called to talk about God to other people. And um, he lived a simple life. So he didn't have a home. He might have lived outside in a tent. I'm not sure. He might have stayed with friends t at times. He lived in the woods, that's exactly right. And he ate, does anybody know what he ate? What? Honey and, do you remember the other? Locust, locusts, like insects. Like, I guess that would be like grasshoppers or something. So bugs, he ate honey and bugs. So he led a simple life, didn't have a lot of stuff, maybe not like us. But his big job was to go and preach to people about God. And what he preached about was repent. He, repent means to turn around, to turn toward God. So John the Baptist was preaching that we need to listen and focus on God and turn around away from the things that we shouldn't be doing. Okay, so if you're on this side, look at that wall. And if you're on this side, look at that wall. Okay. And if I was talking to you, I know you're still listening to me, but sometimes it's hard to listen when you're not looking at me, right? Okay, so look back at me. Everybody look back at me. Can you see me? All right. So if you're looking at me, it's easier for me to talk to you, and it's easier for you to listen. So that's what John the Baptist was telling people, to turn away from sin, which is what separates us from God, is some of the the bad choices that people were making and turn toward God to look at God to listen to God okay so that was the message that John the Baptist was telling the people and it's a message that's so important for us today to to look toward God to listen to what God is calling us to do especially at this time of the year I know today is a big cabbage patch day for us we get to deliver gifts and groceries that we all have helped in one way or another provide for families. So that is one way that Harvey Brown has listened to God on how we can help, especially during this time of the year. So we're going to focus on God and turn away from sin, to turn away from things that keep us from God. All right? All right, can we put our hands together and we'll say our prayer. Say after me. Dear God, Thank you for loving us and caring for us. And help us to focus on you and love others. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, reading from the first chapter, verses 6 through 8, and then 19 through 28. Listen for God's word to you. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. 
What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had sent him from the Pharisees and they asked, wait a minute. Now, now they had sent him from the Pharisees and they asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. And all God's people said, Amen. It's always doubly humiliating to make the mistake in the first service reading that scripture and then make the same mistake in the second service. Uh. Years ago, a woman uh, had been visiting the church for a while with her family, and she came by to talk to me, and she said that her husband was mentally abusing her. She said that after they had gotten married, it had started, and that uh, she had hoped it would get better once they had children, but it did not change. She had hoped it would get better once he got a raise at work and they were better off financially, but it continued. She had hoped it would get better when they moved here to Louisville from Cincinnati, but it did not change. And I said to her, what are you going to do? She said, I don't know what to do. I said, well, have you considered you might have to leave him? And she looked at me and she said, you don't understand. I didn't finish college. I had a menial job when my husband and I met, got married. Our children are in private school. I cannot do that to them. I cannot take them out of the school that they love. How would I survive unless I stay married? <coughs> Indeed. How is it that these things happen and we see it happen? And I looked at her face and I realized that the light in her eyes seem to have gone out. You know that spark that is in us? That spark that is in us, that is that spark of life and hope, it was just gone. I thought about that as I was watching TV in the last couple of weeks. They were showing the homeless having their shelters of cardboard boxes and makeshift tents that they put together to live in being moved out by the city and they were interviewing some of those homeless people and one of the men they were interviewing it was as though the hope that he had now imagine that your hope was clinging on a cardboard box and a tent. Imagine that was all you had, and that was gone. The light just seemed to have gone out. Psalm 126 tells us that the Israelites, when they came back from captivity, Having been gone in Babylon for 50 years, they come back to their home and they were so full of joy to be returning and they got back and they discovered that everything was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. Children were begging in the streets. Everything they had hoped for was gone. Surely, that light must have just been barely flickering in their eyes.
Bob Dylan has an old song. It's not dark yet, but it's getting there. We look at the situation in Puerto Rico and we see that the power is still not on for so many of those people. They had hoped to rebuild and when they're interviewed now, you see that that light in their eyes is disappearing. What do we do? What do we do in this world? Isaiah has these hopeful words that he speaks to us, but those hopeful words don't seem to be a match for the ugliness of the world we live in. It's not dark yet, but it's getting there. We wake up every morning and someone else has been accused of harassment and some of them have admitted it and said, yes, this is true. Some of them have said, no, this never happened. We don't know. Some of them, though, have turned to what about -isms. Al Franken, when he was accused, he said, yeah, I did it. But what about President Trump? When President Trump was accused, some of his followers said, yes, but what about Bill Clinton? And I'm sure if you went to Bill Clinton and accused him, he'd say, yes, but what about? Always we turn that light away from us towards someone else. We don't want to face that truth. And that's why John John, the very Christmas guest we did not want. You know, he's a guy that comes to your Christmas party and you bring out the beautiful tenderloin and you slice it at the table and you put out the salads that are just absolutely delightful and you have the potatoes there and there's dessert in the next room, you can see it. And he comes in and sits down, doesn't smell too good. He's got on his camel skin coat and probably doesn't even take it off. And then out of one of his pockets, he pulls out a little baggie and he's got in it bugs that he sits in there because uh, he's not going to eat any of that tenderloin. He just is into bugs and honey. And, uh, and, and you're hoping for a nice, polite dinner conversation, you know, like what your mother told you to say whenever you were out with other people. You know that, right? Did you get a list? We used to get a list before we went to see relatives. My mother would tell us what we could talk about and what we could not talk about. Do not bring up your aunt's hair. She's very self-conscious about her bald spot. Do not bring it up. I said, but mom, no. Don't bring it up. And so here's John. And everyone's sitting around the table and they're feeling kind of nervous because they just know he's going to bring something up that he shouldn't bring up. And sure enough, he says, repent, repent. I come to point you toward the one who is the light and that light is shining on you and what it is revealing is the truth about who you are. And you can't hide from that. But it is not just bad news. It's not just frightening news. The very one who is shining that light on you, the very one who is that light, is also coming with a message of love and forgiveness. But first, first, we have to have the light. We have to see things as they really are and see the injustice for what it really is. If we're going to change it, if we're going to somehow make it better, we've got to start by acknowledging it, by being truthful about who we are and what our world has become. And then, then, we can begin to turn toward that light, which is our promise and our hope. The word for the year, I've been told, is complicit. 
And the question for us this morning, I think, is we see the injustices in our world. We see the tragedies, tragedies of homelessness and hunger, and we see those people that are held captive by those who have power over them, taken advantage of by those who have power over them. We see those things. And the question is, are we going to point toward that light of truth in hope that we can be forgiven, in hope that the world can change, knowing that that's what God wants? Or will we decide to simply go along? I think I know what your answer would be. One of the texts that's for today that we did not read is from Thessalonians. Let me share this with you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. Jesus began his ministry with those words from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captive and release of the prisoners. And that's the God to whom we are to point, to that God who is saying, I have come to release the captives. I have come to call for forgiveness. I have come to call to teach you how to love one another. And it begins with us turning toward that light. Let us pray. God, your truth comes into the world in the form of a baby. Nothing could be more innocent. Nothing could be less offensive. And yet John reminds us that the message that you bring is one of calling us back to you, of calling us away from those things that we know are not your will, and to the promise that you indeed have come to clothe us with salvation and to bring us back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. stand. Whenever we are invited to a communion, it's been a long church tradition to confess our faith as we find in Nicene's Creed. Let us confess the faith of the universal church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The will of God, pray without ceasing, rejoicing always, and giving thanks in all circumstances. Let us receive our gifts and offerings to our God, giving our thanksgiving.
one of the ways that we witness that light is at this table. We experience that presence of God among us at this table. All those who trust in the Lord are invited to this table, and even those who may have doubts are invited to this table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for your wonderful works of creation, for the grain that becomes bread, the fruit that becomes wine, and the word that become, became flesh. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs, every time and place, forever sing to the glory of your name. How wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with your longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Countless generations have hungered for the bread of freedom. From them, you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread. God of all power, send your Holy Spirit upon us that in sharing the bread we may share in the body of Christ, and that in sharing the cup we may participate in the new covenant. Grant that being joined together in Christ Jesus, we may become united in faith. Hear now our prayers for others. Make your ways known upon earth, Lord God, your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy and gladness. Guide the leaders of this church and this every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. And let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace and let your glory be over all the earth. Lord God, you hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let your great love shine on the waste of our anger and sorrow and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in all our homes and peace in our hearts and in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue the prayer that you prayer that you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Jesus, on the night of his arrest, having given thanks as we have done, took bread and broke it, saying, This is my body, given for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper, he poured into the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink it, we do this in remembrance. the gift of God for the people of God.
Let us join in the prayer of communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me welcome all of you that are visiting with us today. We're delighted that you're here. We hope that you'll come back and visit with us again. And I remind you that you can go by the Welcome Center and there may be some information out there that might interest you. We give thanks for this wonderful time of the year and we hope that you can be here on Wednesday night for our dinner and then for our two services on Christmas Eve, 11 a.m. and 11 p.m and try to be awake for the 11 p.m. <laughs> Remembering that we are called to witness to the light. Remembering that we are called to point to the one who brings salvation. Go into the world sharing the good news with all that you meet. For indeed, our hearts have been filled with joy by the one who has come in the manger. And now, the grace and mercy and peace of the God who created us, the God who redeems us, and the God who sustains us be with us this day and forever. Amen.